In the previous tutorial, we dealt with the filter method of arrays. I mentioned that filter, map, and reduce are often talked about together. In this tutorial, we will be looking at mapping an array to a new array using the map method. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Now, I believe the map method of arrays is another fundamental part of JavaScript that is important to get used to. It needs to be part of your coding arsenal. The purpose of map is to create a new array based on the values of an existing array. The idea is that if you need to manipulate the values of an existing array, don't mutate that array. Use the map method and place the new values in a new array. Now, just like filter, you pass a function to the map method. It is a higher order function. Each value in the array is then passed to that function and then the function manipulates it, returns a new value which is placed in the new array. So let's look at some examples. So here I have an array of numbers. Now I'm going to get the square of each of those numbers. But instead of manipulating the array that they currently are in, I'm going to place them into a new array. So I'm going to call that square and set that equal to nums.map. Okay, so just like filter, we call the map method using the dot syntax. And we pass into the map method a function. So I'm going to define the function inside the parentheses here. Now, here is the function. And as map cycles through this array, it's going to pass each value into that function. So we need to make sure that we can accept that value. So I will place a variable there. Now, since we are creating a new array, this square will contain a new array. We need to return a value. That's a little bit different than filter. Filter, we returned either true or false. And then that determined whether the value was placed in the array. Here, we are changing the value. We are manipulating it. So we do something with the value and return the results. So if we want to return that number squared, we could do it a couple different ways. We could do it with a new exponentiation operator and it would look something like this. Two asterisk and then we indicate what we want that number raised to. This could be two, three, four, five. It could be whatever we want. Here would be the square. Or we could simply do that and return that value. Let's go ahead and see how that works for us. So I'm going to save that and refresh. And let's just take a look at the square array. And here we have back a new array. And notice that there is a value for each value that existed in the original array. And each of these new values are squared because that's what we did to it in the function. Now. So far, as I've been working with these array methods, I've been defining the function inside the parentheses. Well, you don't have to do it that way. That's generally how it's done. That's usually what you see. But I found when I was new to JavaScript, it was easier for me to understand if the function were defined ahead of time and then placed, then passed in, something like this. So I'm just setting up a function that does exactly the same thing, but I'm assigning it to a variable, product. And this is going to return val times val as well. Now that I have this function, I could simply pass it into the map method like that. And that should give us the same results. square and sure enough we get the same results sometimes if you're new to JavaScript that can be easier to understand so basically what we've done in our previous example is we just took this part here 
and we placed it inside of the parentheses where we would normally pass in the function. Now something that's kind of cool about this, defining it this way, is we can then do something like this where we chain methods together. So this is going to return an array with the square of each of these numbers. And then if we multiply those by each other again, it's going to get uh, raised to the fourth. So here's how we would chain those. Now this works because here we have an array, map acts on that array, and map returns an array. So we can then use another method that acts on arrays and then returns an array back to here. And this could be filter like we learned in the last tutorial if we wanted to filter once we had squared those. It just gives you an idea of how you can chain things together. And I've done a, another tutorial on chaining which I'll include a link to. All right, let's just check what this is really quick. And there basically we get the number to the fourth power. So two times two times two times two, right there is 16. All right, now one last thing I want to show before we're done with this. So far as I've been talking about the functions that we pass in to map, I've only indicated that we need to place one variable and that is to grab the value that is passed into that function. Well, we could also have three different things that we grab here. In addition to the value, we could grab the index that is associated with that value in the array and we could grab the original array. So just to show that, let me do a slightly different use of map. So we're going to return an array of objects is what we're going to do. And we're going to act on this array. And we're going to pass in a function, but this time we're going to capture the value and the index and the original array. And then we'll do something with those. Now, since we're creating an array of objects, that's what this is going to be, this is what we will return we will return an object. See, so map is very flexible. You can do a lot of different things with it. And here's what we're going to do with it. I'm going to return an object that has the index of that value. It has the value itself. It then has the square of that value. And so we'll use the exponentiation operator to get that and the cube of that value. And we'll use the exponenti exponentiation operator again. And then I'm going to also store the original array. Just like that. All right, let's save that and refresh. And let's take a look at that array. So as we can see, it's an array of objects. If we then open that up, we can get a better idea of what's inside there. Now let me go to three. Let's take a look at that. So the original value for index three was four. And that's the index of three as indicated here. We pass that value in. Here's the square of that. Here's the cube of that. And then also we have the original array that it came from displayed here. So this gives you an idea of the types of things that are possible with map. It can be more complex than sometimes what the simplest exercises show. So you don't have to limit yourself based upon those simple exercises that try to explain how it works. So that is map. Now situations where you should use map. When you are working with an array and you find a need to manipulate those values, then use map. Don't change the original array. Changing that original array could affect your code in ways you don't intend. And so to prevent that from happening, you map to a new array. You map those values to a new array.
All right, now before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find the tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. Hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release new tutorial each week. If you want, you can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.